So let's go to Luke 7, and we'll read verses 36 through 38. And one of the Pharisees desired him, this is speaking of Jesus, that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and set his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kiss his feet and anointed them with the ointment. So here we see a woman weeping and she's referred to as a sinner and she brought ointment. And this occasion, it wasn't precious ointment, it was just ointment. And we see the reason that she brought it at the end of Luke 7. Um, she was calling upon the name of the Lord. She had a repentant heart. She knew she was a sinner and needed a savior. I think this is the same person that was caught in adultery and that this person was Mary Magdalene. At the end of Jesus saving Mary Magdalene from a physical death of stoning, he told her to go and sin no more. And the reason that he did that, as I elaborated on the last video, wasn't to all of a sudden go from being this adulterous sinner to someone who never sinned anymore in order to receive eternal life, but to point her to the law and for her to realize that she was a sinner and she couldn't uphold the law. Therefore, she conditioned her heart to hear and receive the gospel of Jesus Christ that he died for her sins and or that he, on this side of the cross, was the Redeemer, was the Messiah, was the Christ that was prophesied to come to die for her sins and give her life everlasting. She received that truth. And at the end of Luke 7, Jesus says to her, Thy sins are forgiven. Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. So, when she was a sinner, he told her to go and sin no more, pointing her to the law. Once she understood that she couldn't uphold the law, came to him calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in faith for the remission of sins and life eternal. He said, thy faith has saved thee. Thy sins are forgiven. And he didn't tell her to go and sin no more. He said, go in peace. She didn't give her life for Jesus for salvation. He gave his life to her for salvation. In the same fashion, these Lordship salvation that will point to this example of Mary Magdalene being a great follower and says you have to be like her in order to be saved and be a, a Christian that is assured in their salvation. That's simply not true. They're teaching that you have to be a disciple and be a follower of Jesus Christ. But you just have to believe the gospel in order to be saved. And over time, if we mature from a babe in Christ to a mature Christian, through the Word of God, through developing a good prayer life and reading the Bible daily and being edified by good, sound doctrine of Scripture, we should begin to walk in the same fashion as Mary. But that's not a requirement for salvation. Again, don't listen to the Lordship Salvationists who make that a requirement because it's not. You receive the free gift of eternal life by faith. And you can't lose your salvation by not walking and abiding with God. Now, I'm telling you this, not that I'm discouraging you not to do it, but I know that if you understand that truth, that it's not what you do, but what he did and understand that, truly receive that grace and mercy that Jesus and eternal life brings to a person's life. That's the only way that you can ever get to this point that Mary Magdalene got to. By understanding it's not by your works and maturing in Jesus' love for you. That's how you get to this point. And it comes by faith. Not you going out and trusting in your works and looking at what you're doing as evidence of salvation. On this side of the cross, our evidence of salvation is Jesus' resurrection. He overcame death for us, and we trust in that.